Welcome to Brainstorm MTG. I'm ELD, and this is Fast Effect, Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games. We have Brian with his Eldrazi post list, a very interesting deck. Uh, uses Chalice of the Void to hobble your opponent's options, uh, but also has some insane over-the-top plays uh, using Grim Monolith and Cloud Posts to just cast ridiculously large creatures. We'll see how Brandon can fare against this using Elves. A deck that can easily win on turn three or four. Uh, just an extremely explosive deck that kind of has it all. Fast mana, card drawing, uh, tutoring, and a tinker effect in natural order. Almost feels more like a vintage deck uh, than anything, to be honest. Uh, kind of has everything that you'd be looking for in uh, Magic's most powerful formats. Brian here with at least five mana here on turn two, thanks to Grim Monolith. And just going to cast another Grim Monolith, ratcheting up the mana. Next turn, could see some very large creatures. Queer and Ranger in Glimpse, returning to untap. Now Heritage Druid, all three tapping. He's got three green floating. Brandon in excellent shape here. Nettle Sentinel, Really ideal. A land or elves, and now a birch lore ranger. Three more. Heritage druid, and now these nettle sentinels, if he can get more, are going to allow him to potentially chain through the whole deck. He's got access to three mana right now. He can tap heritage druid and nettle sentinel. Going up to three, and Gaia's Cradle, Green Sun Zenith, he just grabbed Crater Hoof, probably could have just grabbed Crater Hoof, oh he doesn't need to, he can just grab, <laughs> he's, got a, he's got it all, natural order for Crater Hoof, and he's got a Green Sun Zenith, And swinging in. And another natural order. Oh, man. Brandon has it all that game. Brian looking to set up something explosive and over the top. Brandon says, you want to see over the top? I'll show you over the top. How about a pair of Crater Hoof Behemoths? And we're not even going to check how much damage that would do. That is by far lethal. And uh, Brian now... Going to need to be a little bit more careful moving forward down a game. Perhaps he's not going to want to open on anything short of Chalice of the Void, a card that does a lot of work to contain Elves' most explosive draws. Uh, though it is not an absolute trump in this deck, uh, Elves does run a variety of casting costs, and it also has Cavern of Souls, so Chalice feels like it can really be a, a back-breaking card against them, but there are some draws that line up favorably against it, so we'll just have to see how that goes. One of those cards that can absolutely ruin them, and then other games literally doesn't hinder them at all. Reclamation Sage, an absolute powerhouse in this type of matchup. Anytime your opponent has artifacts, or even enchantments uh, that you would potentially want to get repeated destruction of, Reclamation Sage can team up with that Wirewood Symbiote to get picked up, put down every time, enter the battlefield, destroy an artifact or enchantment, and just have an insurmountable advantage over time. Chalice at one now on turn two. Brandon with a weak opening here on Dryad Arbor only. Swinging for one. Dryad Arbor really in the deck as part of the acceleration package. You want to be able to Green Sun Zenith for it on the first turn. Uh, but it feels pretty awful to have to play the card the honest way. It's also nice to fetch out uh, using your fetch lands to enable natural order. Uh, perhaps in a situation where your opponent has uh, really hindered your development. And Thought Not Seer making this a much uglier game here. A forest, not a dryad arbor, fetched out here 
for Brandon. Add the option, unless it's in his hand. The lists usually run two. Guy is Cradle. And we've got a morph in the form of uh, Birch Lore Ranger. One of the nice upsides of that card. The deck will also have Elvish Visionary at two mana. The mentioned Reclamation Sage. Very often Scavenging Ooze as well at two mana. So definitely fighting uphill. Karn, a very real threat. Now this could potentially just grab Mycosynth Lattice. Threaten a game-ending lock, and he does. Brandon potentially has just one turn to deal with this situation. He needs to do something explosive. So right now, he's got four mana, and uh, it's certainly impactful. He decides to scoop it up. He doesn't have a way of playing through that lock, and he wants the time going into game number three. Michael Synth Lattice about to come down there for Brian. For those unfamiliar, Karn uh, would stop all activated abilities of artifacts that Brandon controls, and Michael Synth Lattice turns every permanent into an artifact. So that would mean no more tapping lands for mana, no more activating any abilities on his creatures. A absolute game ending lock. As long as you're ahead, that is game over. Essentially, that Thought Not Seer would be able to play defense, keeping that uh, Birchlore Ranger at bay. And uh, from there, Brian would be free to just go on his way, add additional creatures to the board, and then eventually just start swinging in at Brandon. The writing was on the wall. No sense in playing that out. And uh, Brandon going to look to try and get the advantage on the play here, game three. If you are rooting for elves here, you are hoping for some fast mana on turn one. Llanowar elves, elvish mystic, finhorn elves, or green sun zenith for dryad arbor. Really a good sign. Cavern of souls can also be part of that mix. So it may not be wise to commit that on turn one until that chalice comes out. Rinosphere, a scary card there in Brian's hand. Most recently catapulted up in value thanks to Urza and it actually becoming a modern card now. It was the best card in vintage for a number of years and at that point I don't think it ever broke like a buck or two in terms of value. It was never very valuable when it was the best card in vintage. Um, but modern, such a gigantic pool, uh, that when an older card does make its way in, man, you can see some massive price fluctuations. Brandon, considering this, still on the Vancouver Mulligan as of the filming of this video. Getting through a little backlog here. Looking forward to the London Mulligan videos coming in soon. Chalice at one. That Queer and Ranger, not a ideal start. Fetching for a Bayou, indicating Brandon likely to be playing either Abrupt Decay or actually using the mana this turn. The Ball Therapy. Oh, sick. Brian getting got here by this Cabal Therapy right into his Chalice. No card to be taken. And now a Trinisphere. And things are not looking good here for Brandon. He's going to really need Reclamation Sage. Oh, he psyched me out for a second. I thought it was the Sage. Uh, Elvish Visionary letting him draw a card. Now, Brian doesn't have a board presence for the combat step yet. But man, the stack is fairly well handled. All these spells are going to cost at least three mana. All of the one mana spells are going to be countered. Until further notice, Brandon has natural order as a very live draw. I 
eventually put this game out of reach quickly with a crater hoof behemoth. I believe it would actually be lethal on the next turn here. Did have it, they'd all get plus three, plus three. No crater hoof incoming. We're gonna see a ratchet bomb mop up one of these creatures. Two different casting costs right now. One in two mana. Glimmerpost adding a whole bunch of life here. Reality Smasher now. Some counterplay from Brian. Pushing the life total down. Brian right now winning the race, but Natural Order would end it pretty quickly. Ratchet Bomb getting that Queer and Ranger. Riot Arbor added to the board, essentially adding two mana, one for the Cradle, and of course it taps for green itself. And then the Trample for Reality Smasher. Gonna get there over the 1-1 one, one for exact damage. And that is gonna do it. Brian, taking a look at his sideboard, probably doesn't need to bring in a ton of stuff in this matchup. It is pretty well situated versus Elves. Elves really going to have to rely on the strength of cards like Reclamation Sage to carry the day, and they did not show up for Brandon this time. Uh, but a well-played match um, between these two. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELDs, Time Vault Games, and Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.